Hello everyone, this is Puka, and welcome to another edition of Bad Deck Monday, where we take some silly ideas, put them into action, and uh, see if we can have some fun. Today we're going to look at one of the most requested cards from this new set. You guys have asked for him. I tried not to use him. He's painful to use, but we're going to bust him out today, and that is Waylord EX. So Waylord EX is a beast of a Pokemon, 250 HP, breaking that HP barrier like he always does. The first Waylord EX had 200 HP, which was unheard of over 10 years ago, and Waylord is back to hit that 250 HP the second time around. So just on the HP alone, this card is devastating. Wow, think of how much damage you have to do. Even a card like Empoleon, which can do 120 damage for one energy with attack command, can't even knock out Waylord in two hits. That's pretty silly. So, lots of HP. Of course, when you're using Waylord, you gotta work with the HP. That is the biggest asset here. If you look at the other stuff here, for Retreat, that's not good. Grass Weakness, that's not good. We lose to Verizian Genesect, we don't care. It's Bad Deck Monday. Uh, but, High Breaching... Takes not one, not two, not three, not four, five water energy. One, two, three, four, five to do 120 damage. That's not very good. And then you go to sleep. Okay, so they recognized, okay, 250 HP, that's really good. We can't make the attack very good. Uh, and they, they did a pretty good job at not making it very good. Now, 120 is decent. Uh, it sets up some good numbers, for example, against a Mega Agron EX that has 240 HP, High Breaching twice does do 240 total damage, so I do like that. 120 seemed like the perfect number for, um, not good, but not bad. Decent. And that's exactly, uh, the way it should be with a Pokemon this huge. Alright, so High Breaching is our only attack, so you can imagine how slow this deck is going to be. Unless you run something like Blastoise, which we're not going to be playing in this deck. It's going to take you forever to power this thing up. And man, once you finally power him up, what does he do? 120 damage. That's not exciting. But uh, that's Bad Deck Monday. You'll see why we're using Waylord when we look at the rest of the deck. Uh, the ability is kind of neat. Water Veil, whenever you attach energy from your hand to this Pokemon, and remove all special conditions from it. So uh, if you do get hit by something like a Hypnotoxic Laser, you just boom, attach that water energy. Water Veil, get rid of it. Goodbye, special conditions. So it's actually a decent ability, but man, the energy cost. <sighs> okay, so uh, there's a couple strategies you can use with Waylord. Number one would be Blastoise, uh, you know, Energy Acceleration. You know, take advantage of the fact you have a 250 HP monster, and that's a decent strategy. We're going to go the Bad Deck Monday route, and that's going to be Aurorus. Um, so this is another card that people have asked to see countless times, and, well, why not combine two ideas? Waylord and Aurorus. Aurorus has the ability Ice Shield. Any damage done by an, an opponent's attack to each of your water Pokemon that has any water energy attached is reduced by 20. Now, that was a mouthful, so... Let's just kind of simplify it. If you have a water Pokemon with a water energy attached, Aurorus reduces any damage done to it by 20. Okay. So say your opponent uses uh, Mewtwo EX's side drive against your Waylord EX, and you have a water energy on the Waylord, Aurorus will reduce that down to 100 damage, just for an example. Now, this does stack. If you have four Aurorus in play, you can reduce damage by 80. Extremely unlikely to get four Aurorus in play, but... It, it does exist. You can do that. Um, so it's going to be a damage reduction kind of deck. Uh, kind of just build up a giant Waylord and hope it never goes down. That's going to be the strategy. So we have a 4-4 Aurorus line. Now, keep in mind, Amora has the downside of being a restored Pokemon, which means it's not a basic. You cannot put it right onto your bench, and it says you can only put it onto your bench with the effect of Sail Fossil. We're actually going to go with the Fossil Researcher route instead. Allows you to search for up to two uh, Amora or Tyrant. Put them under your bench. Of course, we're running Amora, so Fossil Researcher, great way to do that. Um, you know, usually I'd play four Fossil Researcher, but, you know, it just takes up so much space. So we're going to run just two copies, and then we're also going to play Jirachi EX. Uh, this makes it so if we have an Ultra Ball, we can search for Jirachi, Stellar Guidance for the Fossil Researcher, and get those Amora into play as soon as possible. 
So it's all about cutting corners when you got to fit so much stuff into a single deck. And uh, Jirachi is a great fit in pretty much every deck, but especially in this one. Now, in addition to Aurorus, we're also going to be playing a Hard Charm, uh, which reduces damage further by 20. And that's pretty cool. Um, you know, if you get four Aurorus in play and a Hard Charm, that's 100 damage you are reducing. Um, some attacks only do 100 damage, so it's pretty silly when you think about it. And uh, keeping up with the theme, we're also going to be playing Rough Seas, 30 and then, or uh, not 30. You get to heal 30 from all of your Water and Lightning Pokemon every turn. So that's really, really strong in combination with all of the damage reducing. We can also heal damage and just make our Waylord an unstoppable force. Also using something like Pokemon Center Lady can heal 60 damage and remove all special conditions from one of your Pokemon. Oh man, the possibilities. You can keep that Waylord alive for a very long time. Now, it is Bad Deck Monday, so we're going to throw some fun strategies in here as well. Uh, instead of going Hard Charm, you can actually do something like Rock Guard. Uh, this is going to be our ace spec for the deck. The Pokemon this card is attached to is your active Pokemon and is damaged by an opponent's attack. Put six damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. So let's say, you know, we got a bunch of Aurorus in play, um, and your opponent can only do like 100 damage per attack. Well, Rock Guard's going to hit them every single time they have to attack you. And this can set up big EXs that have 100 HP or less, or 180 HP or less. You know, if they hit you, they'll take 6 damage counters. And then you can use Waylord's attack to do 120 damage with high breaching and finish them off. So, kind of a neat card you can throw in there as well. Uh, rock Guard seemed like the most fun to use in this deck. And we don't see enough Rock Guard in the world today. We really don't. Okay, we need a lot of water energy. We got 11 in this deck. Um, it does take five to use high breaching, so there's that. We have a lot of high retreat costs in the deck. We got three on Amora. Uh, well, I'm going to get to Keldeo in a second, but three on Aurorus, uh, four on Waylord. So Keldeo EX is going to be our um, switching method of choice along with this Floatstone. Allows you to give free retreat on Keldeo, rush in retreat. That way you don't get bogged down by things like a Lysander on your Aurorus, which could be pretty devastating. Okay, um, this is going to be a really slow deck, so we're going to be playing Manaphy, a card I like to throw into these kinds of decks. Uh, it has Final Wish. If it's knocked out by an opponent's attack, you can search your deck for any card and put it into your hand. Pretty cool. Um, anytime you can search for any card, it's really good, um, even though it does get knocked out. But, you know, you're going to take forever to set up, so it doesn't hurt sometimes to just throw up a Manaphy and just say, here you go, knock him out, uh, and let me search for a card, please. This will help me out. More than your one prize. We'll help you out. We also have Seafaring. You can flip three coins and for each heads, take a basic energy or a water energy out of your discard pile, attach it to one of your bench Pokemon. Um, I mean, that's uh, if you get two or three heads, that's energy acceleration. If you get one heads, it's um, pretty much a wash, pun intended, uh, to, to get the water energy back that you would otherwise attach to Manaphy. Three tails. We don't want to talk about that. That's That's bad news territory. Okay, so the rest of the deck, we do have three Ultra Ball. Um, you know, it's a card that pretty much every deck runs. One Dive Ball you can search for a water Pokemon. I would run four Dive Ball, but Jirachi's too good, so we're going to be playing Ultra Ball instead of the regular Dive Ball. Startling Megaphone, because Garbodor is a real pain, and, well, you know, discarding your opponent's tools is pretty sweet. And then we're going to have all sorts of supporter cards. So we have the regular, the four Professor Juniper, the four N, uh, the one chorus we've seen pretty much everything. And then Lysander, just going to have one of those as well. And then we already saw the Fossil Researcher. And then uh, we saw the Pokemon Center Lady. And we're also going to be playing a Zero Sick. Again, Garbodor is a major pain. And something like Headringer could be super annoying for Waylord. Can you imagine having to pay 6 energy to use your attack? That's absurd. So Zero Sick is a way to discard Team Flare tools. Teammates, a great card. Imagine, you know, a Manaphy getting knocked out. You get to use Final Wish, and then you also get to use Teammates. You basically got to search for three cards in a turn. That's pretty good. And then one Lysander's Trump card. Uh, now this deck is probably going to be one that has very long games. Um, might come close to decking out sometimes. That's just going to happen when you have a 250 HP monster with 
uh, up to 100 damage reduction, and then rough seas, and then Pokemon Center Lady, and whew, I'm getting tired just thinking about it. So Lysander's Trump Card, a great way to recover resources. Uh, the best way, I would say. And that's it. That's uh, that's our Waylord Aurorus deck. And uh, do I think this deck is even remotely competitive? Absolutely not. Uh, five energy is ridiculous. You know, the 250 HP is awesome. Maybe we can use this in some capacity as a wall in some decks. You know, just put Waylord out there and say, all right, hit him. He's not going to get knocked out in one hit. So take your sweet time knocking him out. Well, you have some kind of a hit and run attack like Gengar EX or uh, Don Fan, for example. So those, uh, that's an option for Waylord. But as a main attacker, oh my goodness, it is so slow. Even if you have something like Blastoise, I don't think it's your best option. Um, but the card that's going to make this deck kind of function, we know with all the random supporters, is going to be this VS Seeker, which has become such a staple in pretty much every deck. Um, getting back a supporter card is extremely good. That uh, means we could get back Trump card, Lysander, Chorus, Teammate, Zero Six, Center Lady, anything you want, get it right back. Up to four times in a game, if you play all four of them. So here we have it, Waylord EX, folks. Um, get ready for a long game. Because, boy, this does not have any quick games, let me tell you that much. Uh, usually they are slow and painful, but um, we're going to take a look nonetheless, see if we can get our silly strategy into play. So I'm going to start off with the Manaphy. Not a bad starter, perhaps one of the best. Uh, I, I would actually argue that Waylord is the best starter, since it can buy you time. It's the thing that's going to take the longest to get knocked out. 250 HP is going to take your opponent usually at least 2, 3, 4 turns to take down... Uh, so starting off with the Waylord just to absorb damage for a while is actually a really good starter, but Manaphy, I'll take that too. So my opponent will start off with um, a Mew EX. Looks like clearly we are facing a Night March deck, and there is a Dimension Valley, a Battle Compressor, so my opponent getting off to a pretty quick start in this situation. Uh, unfortunate for me, but oh well. Um, hopefully we can kind of weather the storm and... Um, you know, you're kind of glad to have that trump card in your deck when you're facing a Night March deck. You never know when that might come in handy a little later down the line if we can get our setup going. But, um, it's going to be tough because Night March can potentially knock out Waylord, I guess. Um, boy, that'd be really tough, though. I mean, in order to knock out a clean Waylord with, with no hard charm, no, uh, no Aurorus in play, goodness, that would... You would need all 12 Night March Pokemon in the discard. You need to attack with Mew. Nope, that's not possible. You need one in play. No, Night March can never knock out Waylord in one hit. Uh, it just doesn't happen. Unless there's 11 Night Marchers in the discard. And then a Silver Bangle. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. So, Waylord is very difficult for this deck to knock out, is what I'm getting at. So, on my turn, I decided to go with the Fossil Researcher. Uh, I feel like getting Aurorus into play is going to be good. Um, and man, if he's probably going to get knocked out, so I'll get a final wish and, you know, we'll see what happens. But it uh, looks like we just see an N from my opponent. I'm going to shuffle my hand and get me a new one. So that's, um, I guess, I guess I got decent stuff again. And again, I'll be able to final wish. Once this man, if he goes down, we'll get a Waylord going and uh, kind of go from there. So we'll see. All right, so I, I prioritize getting Amora down because those are so difficult to get out. You got to take your turn with the Fossil Researcher. Maybe the better order would be get a Waylord down, attach, and then get the Fossil Researcher going after that. But uh, I, uh, I decided to just play the safe route here. Let's get those Amora. And somehow Manaphy survived. My opponent was unable to get additional Night March Pokemon in the discard pile. What is going on here? Uh, that was crazy. There were already three in the discard, and my opponent managed to get no more. <laughs> and nothing like a muscle band or anything like that. That's, wow, I cannot believe that happened. So, uh, looks like we're able to get Waylord down at this point. Uh, I'll have an Ultra Ball, discard Jirachi, and a Megaphone. Does, I might not need those, really. And we'll grab Aurorus in this situation, get an Aurorus into play. Make it more difficult to knock out uh, Waylord, and let's go for the Seafaring. We got one heads, that's all I wanted. We only had one energy in the discard pile, so 
Uh, we got that energy onto Waylord after, you know, we discarded one with the Juniper earlier. Okay. So now we got the Waylord going. Um, and here's a Lysander right away to bring him out. So that's a um, sound strategy from my opponent, right? Go after the Waylord. You can't knock it out in one hit. I can't power it up in one turn. So might as well start trying to uh, soften it up a little bit. But, uh, oh, there's the rough seas. It's getting rough out here, folks. Uh, we can go ahead and heal off uh, three damage counters from both Manaphy and Waylord. So that's pretty sweet. I'll actually get a second Aurorus into play and a hard charm onto Waylord. And all of a sudden, that's minus 60 damage. Oh my goodness, what is happening here? Minus 60. And uh, if my opponent was only doing, uh, what, only did like 60 last turn. So that'll probably get reduced down even further. We do see the Acro Bike. Looks like that hits a Lampant into the discard pile. Um... And that's going to mean, oof, uh, now we're getting up to 80 damage on Night March. Battle Compressor can certainly get three more Night Marchers. And it'll be 140, but there's no way I can get knocked out here. There, there's the Pumpkaboo and the Joltik both on the field, so don't have to worry about that. VS Seeker going for an N, all right. So I'm going to get a fresh hand of six, it looks like, so I don't have to burn all my ends. And... All right, um, now we're getting to the point where, okay, there's a muscle band. It's going to be difficult at this point for Waylord to survive more than two more hits, I guess. Um, but he'll always survive one. So it's all about, will I get a Waylord powered up? And if I do, uh, can he go the distance? I mean, Night March, even though it won't get the one hit knockouts, Hitting me for like 160 damage twice is still a knockout. So that's something I have to keep in mind. Uh, it's going to be difficult to survive a lot of hits, but, you know, if we can manage to get big Waylord going, I mean, my opponent just hits me there for 140 damage, ouch. Uh, but if we can manage to get the big guy going, perhaps we can do something, all right? So now I think it's just time to let the Waylord fall. Like I said, he's a good wall. He already took two hits. I mean, what else can we ask for against the Night March deck? A Pokemon just took two shots. And he's still going. He's still got 100 HP left. So I'm proud of my Waylord here. Uh, absolutely, you, you did good, buddy. So uh, we'll get a new one going. And uh, that's got to be the goal at this point. Power up a new Waylord. Put down Keldeo as well just to get, you know... That, uh, that option for the mobility, the Russian in retreat. Unfortunately, I have used two of my float stone already, so that's a bit of a bummer, but that's all right. And, yep, got to pass the turn after this one, I think. Seems like the best way to go about it. So just going to pass the turn, uh, put it on my opponent at this point, and uh, I think that first Waylord is going to go down, but I got a good feeling that maybe we'll be able to power up the bench Waylord at some point. I do have the trump card. We could drop that down uh, in a short amount of time. It's uh, definitely an option. So we could either do it this turn or play an N and see what happens. I did draw the water energy, so I think this might be a turn to play the trump card. But then again, going for the N could limit my opponent's options a little bit, so we'll go for that. Um, because, you know, after the end, you know, I could always get knocked out. And then uh, Final Wish can just search out that trump card anyway. So, uh, no harm in playing the end here, because we're going to use Seafaring, get two heads, oh baby, Waylord is really getting close to powered up, thanks to the good old Manaphy, and now, ooh, things are getting kind of scary, that's a whale with four water energy on it, he just needs number five, and he can start getting some high breaching, oh man, look out. So we see acro bikes and roller skates and all sorts of modes of transportation from my opponent to draw extra cards. Uh, we see bicycle, acro bike, roller skates. There's a switch. Alrighty. Looks like Pumpkaboo coming out to play. Uh, will he use Night March? Or is my opponent just kind of sacrificing Pumpkaboo? Saying, uh, no, I don't want you to get your Waylord up, um... No, oh, that was weird. A uh, DC retreat into a Mew. 
Don't know what happened, but we'll just kind of ignore that. Uh, Night March going to take down the Manaphy, but now we get the final wish. I actually don't even know what to take because I have everything. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to take a float stone, I guess, just in case I need to rush in and retreat. Maybe a rough seas would be a good card to take, but uh, I think it might not even matter. This is going to be such a monumental turn at this point. We can go ahead and lay down the devastating Lysander's trump card. Put down that fifth energy, and away we go. All my opponent's hard work will be undone right here. We just need to drop down. Big Lysander with his crazy stuff going on in the background. And here we go. All my discarded cards get shuffled back in. All of my opponent's Night Marchers get shuffled back in. And that totally neutralizes my opponent's strategy. And we can follow that up with the high breaching 120 damage. Goodbye, Sweet Mew. Um... Okay, so at this point, we have effectively turned the tables entirely. My opponent currently doing zero damage. No Night March Pokemon in the discard pile. The Waylord has a hard charm. We got the double Aurorus on the bench, reducing damage by 60. How is my opponent going to knock out this 250 HP Pokemon at this point in the game? I don't know. Uh, what can my opponent do? My opponent would need such an explosive turn here. Gonna start off with the teammates. That's, that might not be a bad start to the turn, but, you know, teammates only gets two cards. Uh, even if my opponent went double battle compressor here, got six Night March Pokemon in the discard. Well, I mean, that's only doing 60 damage. Uh, 120 minus 60, and you still got 190 to go on the following turn, so I'm feeling pretty safe. Uh, my opponent just... You know, and usually Night March does get hit pretty hard by Trump Card, but they can kind of recover. It, it takes them like two turns to recover, right? You know, one to maybe play a Battle Compressor, then they'll play a Juniper, and then dump a bunch more Pokemon, and then they're finally back up to the, the regular speed after a couple turns. But uh, I don't know if you can afford it against this Waylord. He's going to be getting knockouts every turn. Even after you do get your full setup again, you don't knock out Waylord in one hit, so... This is going to be really tough for my opponent to actually deal with this Waylord. I mean, there, there can be no room for error at this point. We do see a bicycle for four cards. Um, but if my opponent doesn't get a bunch of Night March Pokemon in the discard this turn, it's going to be so tough to do anything. Um, the, the biggest attempt... Wow, there's no Night March Pokemon in the discard. We have not seen a Battle Compressor or anything like that. Oof. Uh, oh no, <laughs> the secret sword for 10 damage. That is not what you want to see this late into the game. And you know, I'm going to take this opportunity. Let's go fossil researcher, get two more Amora down on the board. We're going to go for the full four Auroras this game, folks. Uh, let's put down the float stone out of Keldeo at this point. You know, even if that gets discarded, we'll have an energy we could rush in and retreat. So nothing to worry about there. High Breaching, goodbye Mew number two. Not to be confused with Mew two, just two Mews. Um, knockout on the Mew EX. Pumpkaboo coming active. And um, you know, in two turns, we've taken two knockouts on Mew EX. This should not happen very often with Waylord, where you get one-hit knockouts on EXs. But in this situation, oh, it's happening. We finally see a Battle Compressor from my opponent. But like I've said, this is going to be so difficult to really do much of anything. Um, even if my opponent got every possible Night March Pokemon in the discard, which would be 10, since there were already two in play, wouldn't matter. But no, a Night March for zero damage! How often do you see a Night March for zero? Oh my goodness. Um, we got the third Aurorus down. I could play uh, any number of cards here, but let's go for the Juniper and try to hit that Aurorus number four, and I think we're gonna get it. Ultra Ball for Aurorus number four, the Quad Aurorus. We are reducing by 100 damage at this point. We have a fully powered Waylord EX, high breaching, goodbye Pumpkaboo, and what can my opponent possibly do at this stage in the game? Looks like we're going to wake up from the sleep again. Wouldn't have mattered. We had Keldeo to rush in and retreat. And now can my opponent possibly do anything 
to prevent the Waylord from coming into play and hitting with that high breaching. Joltik going to come out and let's see how much he hits for. Zero! A whopping zero damage reduced by 100. And oh my goodness, this one gigantic Waylord EX uses high breaching over and over and over. And how much damage did he take, folks? How much damage since he went active? 10. 10 damage. That's it. The monstrous combo of Waylord and Aurorus coming through big time, folks. Waylord EX absolutely devastating my opponent. The rough seas, the high breaching. Oh, Waylord's time has come. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll certainly have some more for you soon. I am Puka from the Top Cut, and I'll see you guys next time.